Hey, what's going on everybody? Thomas here, and this is Buffalo Fanatics. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Buffalo Bills wide receiver room and what the hell McBean's gonna do there. Stay tuned and find out. So first off, I got a little announcement to make. I got a microphone here that I've had for a while, but I decided to pull it out of the closet and start using it. So tell me in the comments down below if it sounds a lot cleaner, a lot more pure. Um, what does it sound like? Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know because I'm trying to get you guys the best quality videos that I can. And if that means pulling this thing out of the closet and using it, then I'm going to do it. But anyways, this video is not about the microphone. This video is about the Buffalo Bills wide receiver room. What's gonna happen? So let's jump right into it. Zay Jones. What's gonna happen with Zay Jones? We already know that he had a big, you know what, mess up. It's all messy right now, bloody drugs probably involved. Who knows? Who knows, right? So what are the Bills gonna do? They have a few options. They can keep him on the roster and give him a second chance or cut him. I don't think they're gonna cut him. He was a second rounder. We moved up a few spots to get him. We gave away a few picks to get him. He's, he's too valuable to let go, in my opinion. We spent too much on him, gotta keep him. The NFL, are they gonna suspend him? What are they gonna do with it? When more information comes to light, then we're gonna be able to see what the NFL is gonna do with him. So that remains up in the air. But as of right now, he's our second best receiver on the roster. And we got Calvin Benjamin, Zay Jones, Andre Holmes, Rod Streeter, and Brandon Riley as our top five receivers. That is disgusting. That is disgusting, man. I mean, you need more depth for sure. You need you need a number two, a number three, because who knows, if Zay Jones is suspended and you got Andre Holmes as your number two, a guy who barely played last year any, anyways, ugh, what are you gonna do? You gotta get more receivers, that's without a doubt. I already made a wide receiver video before, if you guys were following the channel before. By the way, if you're new, subscribe. Stop the video right now and go down and subscribe um, for more videos. This kind of stuff happens. This kind of talk, this Buffalo Bills talk, uh, you know, happens all the time. So go down and do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. But anyways, by having Zay Jones get suspended and you have Andre Holmes as your number two wide receiver, kill me. Please. That's horrible. That's disgusting. But... So, so it's without a doubt the Buffalo Bills have to make a move in free agency, um, maybe resign Jordan Matthews, or draft a guy. And I think drafting a guy sounds the most important. So I got 10 wide receiver prospects in this year's draft who the Buffalo Bills could target in the first, second, or third, maybe even fourth, fifth round, depending on who's there. So I picked the 10 best, most valued receivers that the Buffalo Bills could go after. Um, they got two firsts, two seconds, two thirds, a fourth, I think two fifths and a sixth maybe, or one fifth and a sixth. So with that many picks, even if the Bills were to trade up, they'd probably end up having a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, fourth round pick, fifth round pick, sixth round pick, you get the idea. So we'd actually have a pretty normal draft if we moved up. So first off, if you're opposed to the idea of moving up, all I gotta say is trust the process. What's gonna happen is what's gonna happen and you gotta deal with it and we're all gonna go behind no matter who's the quarterback. If the quarterback's Josh Allen, we're gonna be behind the quarterback. If the quarterback's Mason Rudolph, we're gonna be behind the quarterback. We gotta support him with everything that we can, you know, and whatever happens, happens. But with that being said, let's jump right into the top 10 prospects um, in, for wide receivers in the 2018 NFL Draft. So coming in at number one on my best wide receiver prospect list, I got Calvin Ridley. I think that this is a no-brainer. Um, Calvin Ridley has definitely showed in the combine, through his stats, through his collegiate career, he is ready to be a starter. Um, and he can be a, I could see him going in the first, in the first or second round, um, probably a late first, um, if you ask me, but I could also see him going mid first. I don't think he's gonna go early first I don't think there's there are too many there are too many teams with needing quarterbacks and other players more than wide receiver in the top 15 picks so I could see him going you know, mid-round, I could also see him going late round. He could even fall to the second round, but I don't think that's likely. Here's what I've written about him. He's six foot, he's 189, and he ran a 4-4-3. Now his pros is that he's very good at route running, he's very quick, and he's got great hands. His cons, he's got a little bit of a thin frame. The boy's a little, 
boy got to put on some pounds, if you know what I'm saying. And he's also seen as a late first rounder, so he's not the kind of guy who's, who is going to be picked that is like, I got to get this guy. If he's on the board, I got to get him. He's going to fall. So it really depends, which tells you that he's good enough to be a first rounder, but he's not wow. You know, he's, he's the best wide receiver in the draft, but he's not wow is what I'm trying to say. Now, moving on at number two, I have Cortland Sutton. He was kind of thought of as the number one prospect in this draft, but it kind of moved on into Calvin Ridley's favor, but he is a late first and an early second round talent in my opinion. He Now here is what I've written about him. He's 6'4", he's 218, he ran a 4'5'4". Four, four. He's 6'4", and he ran a 4'5'4". Four, four. That's pretty damn good. Now his pros, he's got good hands, he's got amazing height, good body control, he's got good jumping ability, He's a big red zone threat. He's physical against smaller corners and he has big play ability. Now my cons is that he's not super fast. That's all I have for him because he did run a 4 he did run a 454. Four. So in my opinion, he's still a nice prospect to get. Moving on, we have Equanimous, Equanimous St. Brown, the dude from Notre Dame. <laughs> Let's just say that. The dude from Notre Dame. I am projecting him as a first to third round talent. He's 6'5", 214, and he ran a 448. Now here are his pros. He has excellent route running ability. His height is great. He's really fast for being uh, he's really fast for being 6'5". Scouts say he is super polished. He has athletic ability and he also has great hands. Now, these are the cons. The bad quarterback play at Notre Dame limited him. And when I say limited him, it did limit him. So he could very well be the best wide receiver prospect if he had a better quarterback throwing to him. Now, in my opinion, I would love for the Buffalo Bills to grab this guy. Um, I think that with his size and his speed, he is definitely interesting. He's definitely interesting, and I think the Buffalo Bills should pursue him, and I think they are going to think about pursuing him. Now, moving on, we have the speedster. They call him the Baby Beckham. Number four, Christian Kirk. Now, I projected him to be a first to third round talent, um, and he is 5'10", 201, and he ran a 4'4'6". Now, these are his pros. He has versatility. He can punt return. He can kick return. He's a fast playmaker, he has, he has, and he's kind of a slot type receiver. Now here are his cons. The QB play really limited him to get the ball, and then also a lot of teams were actually down on him thinking that he would be a third round talent in their opinion. Now moving on, we have the speedster of the group, DJ Chark. He, in my, opin in my opinion, I see him going in the second or third round. He is 6'2", 199, and he ran a 4-3, Four. He's 6'2", he ran a 4'3'4". Four, four. Wow, that's nice. So these are the pros. Super fast, gets vertical very quickly, he has great athletic ability. Now these are the cons. The quarterback play at LSU limited him, and he must have an above average quarterback to be good. So moving on at number 6, we have another DJ. DJ Moore. He's a second to third round talent in my opinion. He's six foot. He's 210, and he ran a 442. Now these are the pros. He's got a thick build, he's strong and physical, and he's got an aggressive spirit, and many teams value him at a second round pick. Now these are the cons. The only thing I have, thick build. Some say he looks like a running back, so do you really want that at a wide receiver position? I'm not sure, it really depends, but that's the only thing that I have for him. Moving on, at number seven, I have Auden Tate. He's a second to third round talent. He's 6'5", he's 228, and he ran a 4'6'8". Now these are his pros. He's got great height, he's a big jump ball go-getter, big red zone threat, and these are the cons. The QB play limited him, he can't get much separation, and he did have a slower 40 yard time, and he kind of reminds me of Kelvin Benjamin. Moving on at number eight, I have Simi Cobbs Jr. He's a second to third round talent. He's 6'3", 220, 
and he ran a 4.64. Now these are the pros. His size is good, he's got great hands, he's got great quickness, good route running ability, body control, and ability to win 50-50 balls. Now these are the cons. He had kind of a slower 40 yard time, and he needs good quarterback play to be successful in the league. So moving on to number nine, I have Anthony Miller. He's a second to third round talent in my opinion. He's 5'11", 201 pounds, and he also ran a 4'5'2". Now these are the pros. He's got good route running ability, good quickness, good hands. He's got great elusiveness after the catch, and he's kind of a slot receiver. Now cons. He didn't run at the combine, but four five and four five two isn't that fast for his size being 5'11". And lastly on my list, at number 10, I have Deshaun Hamilton. In my opinion, I value him at a third to fifth round talent. He's six foot, 202 pounds, and he ran a 4.51. Now the pros are he's a good route runner, capable of separation, reliable hands, quickness, and he's polished. Now these are the cons. He's not super fast for his size, plus he didn't have the best stats. So that's going to be it for my list of my top 10 receivers that the Buffalo Bills could grab. Um, in this year's draft in the first second or third round um, In my opinion, I think the Buffalo Bills what the hell is floating around in my opinion I think the Buffalo Bills could very well move up in the draft and still keep a second or third and definitely probably a fourth round pick um, so one of these guys I think is a must get um, because our wide receiver room is so small and, and there's no depth with good players. So here is the free agency market right now as it is for wide receivers. Terrell Pryor, Mike Wallace, Eric Decker, Jordan Matthews, and Jeremy Macklin at the, as the top five receivers. If you ask me whether I'd like us to draft a quarterback or us to go in free agency, to me, I would rather go with the draft and get a guy who I think is a better prospect who's got a lot more upside than these free agents. Now, with that being said, with how Deontay Thompson went to the Cowboys and with the Zay Jones thing, Jordan Matthews, I think, is a must resign. I think, you know, his injury limited him, and if you can get him back at a minimal price, I think that is a very good deal, and the Buffalo Bills really should do that considering the small receiver room. So that's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go give it a big thumbs up down below. Comment your opinions. Let me know exactly what wide receiver you guys would love the Buffalo Bills to target, whether that be in free agency or the draft, um, and what wide receiver you want to see in a Buffalo Bills uniform next year. And if you guys haven't done it already, please go hit the subscribe button down below. Also, hit that bell to notify you every single time we have a new video um, up. Uh, but that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Peace. Also, I want to give a big shout out to the Buffalo Fanatics Instagram. Uh, if you guys haven't followed them already, go follow them. They have some great content. Also, I want to give another big shout out to a few guys, uh, True Bills fans, the FB Analyst, and Buffalo Bills News. Um, those guys have been um, really, really helpful in helping me on Instagram and delivering some great content. So if you haven't followed them already, go follow them as well. But I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.